Hey guys, so this screencast is uh, devoted to uh, the dye hybrid cross. So in the previous screencast, uh, we talked about a mono hybrid cross, meaning we were just crossing uh, heterozygotes at one gene. So obviously this paints a, a over, overly simplified picture genetically of, of various organisms. Many times we're going to want to consider what is happening at two genes uh, in an organism. So instead of just considering flower petal color, for example, and the differences between purple and white, uh, we might want to also look at what are the differences in pea seed shape? What are the differences in pea seed color that are occurring between the different organisms? So when you're shifting gears a little bit from one gene to two genes, obviously that's going to create uh, some challenges as far as how you're going to pack the different alleles from different genes into various gametes. So it's a little more complicated, but with a little practice, I don't think we're going to have any problems whatsoever. Uh, again, just going over the basic biology here with genetics, when we do a, a cross, basically what we're saying is we're going to take uh, two organisms and we're going to mate them. Okay, So when you take, uh, for example, this male pea plant and uh, this female pea plant, you're going to cross them, you're going to you're going to mate them, you're going to do a a uh, cross fertilization like Mendel did. To do this, though, we need to determine what sort of gametes this male and this female can offer. Okay, so let's take for example this true breeding plant uh, that always produces round and yellow uh, peas. Big R equals round, little r equals wrinkled, big Y equals yellow, and little y equals uh, green. So those are the rules here, right? So this is dominant, this is dominant. Whenever you see one of those uh, present in the genotype, you're going to see that phenotype. Okay, so you take this true breeder and you cross it to this true breeder. The first thing you have to do, guys, is determine what alleles these plants can put into their gametes. So for the for the males, uh, what are you going to see in the sperm? And for the female, what are you going to see in the eggs? Okay. Uh, this makes it very simple for this, at least for these true breeders, right? Because with respect to the uh, to the seed shape gene. what are the different alleles that this male can offer? Well, there's only one type of allele there. He's homozygous dominant, so the male can only uh, offer his next generation, his progeny, a big R allele because, again, he's homozygous dominant. There's two big R's there. So you'll never find a little r allele in the pollen of this plant because it doesn't exist. It's, it goes back to that spinach example in class. Okay, now with respect to the uh, seed color gene, which, you know, these are the, the R, uh, this, this one up here is the R, big R, little r. The seed color gene is big Y, uh, little y. So with respect to this gene, this the one that determines seed color, what are the allele options for the male? Okay, we're going back to this genotype up here. Well, there really are not any options. That's what makes it really easy. So for this one, the only thing that the male can offer is a big Y. So you're only going to see big Y uh, in the this, this sperm. Uh, big Y only. Okay. The opposite is true for the female. For respect to, with respect to the uh, seed shape gene, the only allele you get is little r. With respect to the uh, seed shape gene, which is over here, you only see little y, little y. So this can only be a little y, little y, little y, little y. Therefore, all of the eggs will have these alleles in the gametes, as gametes, and um, the sperm over here will only have these two alleles present. Here's the question, and here's the question I keep on tripping everybody up in class. 
Okay, in the monohybrid cross, when we were talking about flower petal color, I asked you how many unique genes were we considering? The answer to that is one. We were only considering the flower petal color gene. Sure, there's one on the male, there's one on the female, so uh, there's two total, one from mom, one from dad, but it's the same gene. It's just the same gene found on the same chromosome. So I will ask you this question uh, in class or on the test. I will ask you how many genes. So just get used to understanding that. Now if I ask you this in this dihybrid cross, how many different genes are we considering? I'm not asking you how many total genes are found on all the chromosomes in mom and all the chromosomes in dad. I'm not asking that. I'm saying how many unique, how many different genes are we considering here? Another way you can think of it is what are the two different phenotypes that we're looking at? Well, that gives the answer away. There's the gene that determines uh, seed shape. Again, that's found in both organisms, but it's the same gene. And there's also the gene that determines uh, pea seed color. So that's here. Right? Yeah, they're found in both parents, but uniquely, there's two unique genes. There's the seed shape gene and the seed color gene. Now, each of these in this different example are offering different alleles. There's there's big R, little r alleles for the seed shape gene, and there's big Y, little y alleles for the seed, uh, seed color gene. But again, this is one gene. This is a separate gene, so there's a total of two genes. And there's two alleles here and two alleles here, so there's a total of four alleles, four possible alleles in this example. Okay, so that's, that's a lot. That's half our screencast right there, but I think it's worth... Um, outlining all that stuff and going over that stuff again. So how does the dihybrid cross work? Well, again, you uh, like in that last slide, you take the uh, the parent generation. So we're going to take uh, this male and this female. We're going to cross them to each other. This guy is going to offer RY um, all alleles in his sperm. This uh, girl is going to offer RY alleles in her egg. Uh, so essentially, everything is going to have this genotype. Everything's going to be big R, little r, big Y, little y. Why? Because uh, the dad's going to give a big R. Mom's going to give a little r. She has to. He has to. In this case, dad is going to give a big Y. Mom is going to give a little y because they have to. So... Um, this is going to be a heterozygote for two genes. So both of the genes are heterozygous. You get mixed alleles, a big R, little r, a big Y, little y. And this is the F1 generation. This is the generation created by the parents mating. So this would be like, um, this would be your parents right here. And they, they mate and they create you and your siblings. So. Uh, this is the F1 generation, the next generation. Now, what happens if I take uh, you and your siblings and I cross you guys out in experiments? Well, if I take a couple of pea plants that have the same genotype, these two right here, um, so if I mate big R, little r, big Y, little y, and I made it to the same type of organism, uh, the result of that cross would give you the F2 generation. Uh, with these four different uh, phenotypes, okay, in the characteristic 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. So you'll get 9 yellow round, 3 yellow wrinkled, 3 green round, and 1 uh, green wrinkled. So this would be the homozygous recessive. This would be the uh, homozygous dominant uh, for both genes. Now, specifically, how does this cross work? We spent a lot of time going over this. Um, I don't, well, it, it doesn't matter. I can, I can kind of show you the trick to this um, right here, right here at this cross right here. Um, the trick to it is that you have to decide uh, what sort of gametes this guy produces and what sort of gametes this produces. I can cut to the chase. You can see that these are the same. 
uh, genotypes. So you really only need to figure it out for one. Here's the, the, the trick that I do. I take this big R and I say that this allele with respect to this uh, seed shape gene could be accompanied with this and it could be accompanied with this. Uh, likewise, this little r can be accompanied with this big Y and this little y. So what does that give me? Well, for gametes for both of these, they should have this mixture of different alleles. So a big R with a big Y, that's this first one here. A big R with a little y, that's the second one right here. A little r with a big Y, that's this one right here. So remember, I'm making combinations of alleles from different genes because they, when they segregate, they, 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 they assort randomly. So this is the random assortment that we're talking about. Little r, little y. These are the gametes produced. Where do we put gametes when we're doing a Punnett square? We put the gametes on the outside, guys. Remember, uh, for both sperm, which is up here, and eggs, we're just basically representing the different combinations on the outside here. So you get your big R, your big Y, your big R, your little Y, your little R, your little Y here, or big Y there, excuse me, and your little R, little Y. And remember, these were the same because it was the same genotype. Okay, that's a lot, but stick with me here. So uh, sperm and eggs are haploid. Haploid. That's why they only have one R and one Y, one R and one Y, because they only have one set of chromosomes, so they can only have one possible allele from these genes. Now, on the inside here, we create zygotes. Zygotes are diploid, meaning they have two sets of chromosomes. Therefore, they can have two alleles. Take, for example, this guy right here, this little zygote here, produced from this female and this male. Now I'm showing you here that there's a big R, a big Y in this egg, and there's a big R and a big Y in this sperm. So this big R is from mom, this big R is from dad. They also produce big Y and big Y. So this big Y is from dad, this big Y is from mom. That's where you get these four because you're getting a set of each allele. Remember, there's one, two over here, one, two over here. They come together to make this uh, diploid pea plant. And again, it's just a it's just a matter of taking these gametes, guys, and playing sort of connect four with them. This is how you get this one: big R, little y, big R, little y. So both big R's, both little y's. This little y right here, the little r, little y, little r, little y here. That's why there's just little r's and little y's. Now you have to remember your key to get the phenotypes. So those are all genotypes. The phenotypes, which are 9, 3, 3, 1, you have to remember that big r is dominant and round, little r is wrinkled, big y is yellow, and little y is green. So again, this is taking a lot of practice. You, you just, you have to practice this, guys. Unless you sit down and do these examples that I give you, it's going to seem really, really foreign to you. So uh, do the homework, take chances to, to practice it and be wrong so that when, you, when you're taking it on the test and it actually counts, you can be right. Um, the reason that we get all of these different combinations and the reason that we have to make this really big Punnett square here is that when there's two different genes with multiple alleles, you get different combinations. Remember when we talked about metaphase here, um, and if you're, you're aligning chromosomes at the plate, um, it depends on if they're dads or, or moms or if they're moms or dads on each side, right? Anything is possible. Random alignment happens different ways. So uh, random assortment leads to all these different combinations. So we'll figure that out next time.